E3D's new interchangeable nozzle Rebo system aims to become the new standard in 3D printing. But is it simply about convenience or can it keep up on a high-speed Core XY machine? E3D have had the most popular hotend design on 3D printers for years now with the V6 and Volcano hotends. This has been fitted from factory to models like the Prusa Mark III and cloned many other times on cheaper printers. Now E3D have the Revo, which aims to take major steps forward in terms of usability and convenience. Revos were sent to many YouTubers and some great technical guides have already been made such as those from Tom San Laterer and CNC Kitchen which I've linked below. For this video, we're going to concentrate on a practical test, seeing if the Revo is suitable for use on a high-performance Core XY 3D printer. E3D's Revo is a new hot-end ecosystem from E3D. They have a series of articles on their website explaining how it works, so let's explore that and look at some of the features. Currently, you can buy either the Revo 6, Micro or Hamera, but there's other versions on the way such as the Revo Voron and no doubt more in the future. The Hamera version is already clear, but what about the others? On the left here we have the Revo 6, which is designed to be a straight replacement for the older V6, featuring a groove mount at the top. On the right we have the Revo Micro, which is designed to be smaller and lighter. This is designed for custom installations, where weight saving was the absolute priority, right down to the heatsink cooling fan. The whole system is modular using the same heater core, interchangeable nozzles, each of which are compatible with the different mounts, so you can share nozzles between any of your printers running the Revo system. The thermistor and heater core is an all-in-one unit, it's surrounded by a black silicon sock, and it also has some proper strain relief inside. You'll notice that it's attached to the heatsink only by this spring. As well as being addictive to play with, this stops the heater core from falling off the printer when there's no nozzle in place, but it also serves the important role of applying pressure to the nozzle to prevent it from coming unscrewed unintentionally. It's also worth noting that the heater is ceramic and has a positive temperature coefficient. This means that the required power to the heater decreases as it gets hotter, and on paper, combined with the tidied up wiring, should make for a safer solution. For me, it's the interchangeable nozzles that are most significant for the Revo system. Dimensionally, each is identical, apart of course from the actual opening on the end where the plastic is extruded. Each size has a colour-coded silicon sock, but the value is also engraved underneath that. Changing between nozzles requires absolutely no tools, and we start by removing the filament and creating clearance underneath the nozzle. In my case, the part cooling fan ducts are removable to give me more clearance, and assuming everything is cool to touch, we simply reach under, unscrew one nozzle, and insert the new nozzle in its place. The whole procedure is done without tools, without any risk of burning yourself, and without the need to hot tighten. These nozzles are all metal, so let's explain what that means. On a Creality style lined hot end, we can see the PTFE tube here in blue goes the whole way through the hot end to the back of the nozzle in the hot zone. If it's not seated correctly, leaving a little gap, which when the molten filament retracts, will likely flow into this gap and jam the whole thing. Furthermore, because the PTFE tube gets really hot, it will degrade over time, leading to stringing, and if you get it really hot, it can emit dangerous gases. In the Revo's predecessor, the V6, this problem is fixed because the PTFE tube stays cold, and all of the components in the melt zone are metal. Like the lined hot end, it's imperative to make sure that everything is sealed to prevent the nozzle from coming loose and to prevent any jams. To avoid this, changing the nozzle was a two-stage process. It needed to be screwed in hand tight with careful consideration of the angle of the heat block. You then had to heat up the hot end to near its maximum before giving a final hot tighten to guarantee a nice seal. Comparing the V6 to the Revo, we see the improvements. The nozzle and heat brake are made up of multiple components, but they're pre-assembled and to the user, they're essentially one piece. This guarantees no leakage and a simple user experience. The prices are not exactly cheap, but E3D has always been about quality, performance and reliability. You can get all of the components individually, which is good if you need spares, but realistically, most people are going to buy everything in a set by specifying their heater voltage, and then either getting a single nozzle kit or a fully loaded kit that comes with four different nozzles. And that's exactly what you're seeing in this video for both the Revo 6 and the Revo Micro the fully loaded kit with all fans, wiring, nozzles, etc. 
These kits were provided free of charge by E3D in accordance with my review policy. Next up is looking at my target printer, my goals, and then starting installation. Recently, I finished a four part build series on the second SK tank. I built this machine with an E3D Volcano clone and like the Ratrig V Core 3 before it, I choose to print on it at 200 millimeters per second with 5K acceleration and five millimeters per second square corner velocity. So far I can print really fast with high quality and I'd like to retain this. I have had persistent stringing with the original hot end however, so I would like to try and fix this as I fit the Revo, because apart from the stringing, the print quality is outstanding. Finally, since the nozzles are interchangeable, I'd not only like to print with a 0.4 nozzle, but also smaller and larger nozzles too. So on to installation. Most printers are going to start by disassembling the factory extruder and hot end. This printer runs a BMG clone, so all I need to do is unbolt the three screws holding the two halves together and pull out the old hot end. Naturally, I'll be fitting the Revo 6 as it's a straight swap. Assembly is therefore just the reverse of disassembly, apart from running the wires back to the main board, which happened to be the perfect length for me. Previously, I upgraded the part cooling with this excellent modular design from Declinox. As you can see, the original ducts for the Volcano hot end sit far too low for the Revo hot end. But as I said, this design is modular, so I simply removed the Volcano ducts, fitted those intended for a V6, but unfortunately, I found they still sat just a little bit too low. A custom solution would be needed, so I switched to CAD, imported the step file of the main body from the author, and honed by several iterations, I produced some ducts that not only sat the right height, but had these cutouts to clear the heater core. I prototyped them in PLA, but after many hours of printing, they haven't suffered any heat damage, so I've left them as is. If you've got the same hardware yourself, I've published them along with the source CAD on Thingiverse. With the physical install done, that brings us on to calibration, and the most essential item here is picking the correct thermistor. E3D uses a Semitech 104 GT2. This was what was already in my clipper config, so on my printer, no extra changes were needed. In Marlin firmware, this is the Mr. Preset number 5. So all you would need to change before recompiling is your temp sensor 0 to match. PID auto-tune and changing the Z offset or re-leveling the bed I've covered a million times before, and I've linked to my website below in the description. Beyond this, there's technically optional but highly recommended steps for calibration starting with retuning linear or pressure advance. For my printer, this needed a very small increase from 0.03 to 0.04. For input shaping, I ran the auto tune with an accelerometer and clipper, and for retraction tuning, I used the tool on my website to generate this test tower and was pleased to find that my previous stringing issues were pretty much gone. Very promising so far, so how about some 3D printing? I started by printing some brackets for a project that you'll be seeing shortly on the channel. And on the early layers, everything was looking just fine. There was no issues with flow. Clearly, the Revo was keeping up with the pace. But a short while later in the print, I noticed some rough extrusion before the nozzle collided and caused a layer shift. Clearly, something was wrong and I had to work out what it was. From what I could see, there was severe under extrusion as the print returned to solid infill. And when the next layer was printed on top of this, it left a bumpy surface that the nozzle would catch on. The way I saw it, I had three main options for a fix. I could simply lower the feed rate, but that would increase the print time. I could increase the hot end temp, but I would risk bringing back the stringing. Or I could change to a higher flow hot end, but obviously that's something I wasn't considering at this stage. The easiest fix was to simply up the temperature. I didn't notice any extra stringing, but the problem persisted. I tried lowering the feed rates for the solid infill down to 50%. But again, more under extrusion, and then a layer shift. The only thing that worked was changing the universal feed rate down mid-print to get past that section, which resulted in good looking and strong prints. So I dug a little deeper into the slicer, and I noticed that there was one particular layer that was much faster than the others, 300 millimeters per second. I identified the high speed section as internal bridge infill, and then saw that it was set to 150%, or 300 millimeters per second all along. Feeling like an idiot, I lowered this down to 100, restored my previous slower feed rates for solid infill, and got printing the next parts of the project. As before, no problems with any of the other layers, and no problems either with the internal bridge infill, now at the correct speed of 200 millimeters per second. 
This feature will never be perfectly smooth because it's designed to be printed over sparse infill, but this result is easily good enough and a big win. 300 millimeters per second might be too much, but 200 millimeters per second offered no problem for the 0.4 millimeter nozzle. How about another model with the same nozzle to demonstrate just how fast this printing is? This AT-AT is one of the amazing print in place models from Fab365. I printed all of the parts with the same speed settings, but with a reduced layer height of 0.1mm to match the recommendations on the website. The website also suggests printing times for each of the parts, and as you can see, with this fast printing profile, we absolutely smashed them. Overall, the parts were printed in 23 hours less than the suggested, which is only 37% as long. Best of all, the parts looked great and the clearances were spot on as all of the moving parts were able to articulate without any issues. I would have preferred to have printed this with a 0.2mm layer height and that would have saved even more time. So far, we've been able to demonstrate practically that the Revo can support high speed printing with the default 0.4mm nozzle, but what about these other nozzle sizes? I started by fitting the smaller yellow 0.25mm nozzle which should be ideal for printing small and detailed objects. In terms of my slicer, all I did was lower the nozzle diameter and the max layer height, no retraction changes at all. I then switched to my Prusa Mini profile, set up for a 0.15mm layer height and upped the feed rate from 60 to 100mm per second. As the first layer went down of my test print, I was anxious to see if I would need to adjust the Z offset but as it turns out, it was pretty close to perfect without any alteration. This is a bracket that needed replacing that I had previously designed. I'm happy with the result, especially that there's no stringing. That accounts for small, but what about detailed? I loaded up this Wear Tiger model, and quite frankly, the result is stunning. With this marble X3D filament, we have exquisite detail, no stringing, and no hanging on the underside. This result is approaching the quality we can achieve from resin printing and another big tick for the Revo. Next up, I installed a 0.6mm nozzle with my favoured layer height of 0.4mm. This print is another free test from my calibration website and allows you to set the exact feed rate for different bands, ideal in my case for testing nozzle flow and finding the point at which the Revo just couldn't keep up. We can see extruding PLA that 60 millimeters per second was fine, 70 was fine, but at 80 we had a complete breakdown. So why so much slower? If we look at the cross section for the 0.4 millimeter nozzle extrusion versus the 0.6 millimeter nozzle extrusion, there's approximately triple the volume of plastic flowing, and therefore we're going to need roughly one third the speed. When I slowed the feed rate down to 70 millimeters per second, that gave a pretty equivalent volumetric flow to printing at 200 millimeters per second with the smaller nozzle and layer height. And that allowed me to produce big, accurate parts, printed quite fast still, because remember we've got half the amount of layers. There were some portions where filaments seemed to be stuck on the nozzle and then come free and be left on the surface, but overall it's still really clean and once again no stringing. Time to summarize, and I'm well aware that my testing is specific to my particular needs and they won't align with everyone. My primary aim of maintaining feed rate and acceleration values to print fast with the Revo was an emphatic victory after I realized my slicer error. Unless you are doing speed benchies, I don't expect you to have a bottleneck with the Revo. Print quality actually improved for me with the nagging stringing eliminated despite using higher nozzle temps. Finally, I found the changing of the nozzles convenient and their consistent length meant that little to no first layer tweaking was required. I was able to print detailed parts with a smaller nozzle and structural parts with a large one. At the moment, the Revo is limited in some ways. For instance, nozzles that can support abrasives and higher flow heated cores aren't available but are on the roadmap. But even so, as it stands, Revo will be suitable for the vast majority of applications. One final thing, inside the box for my Revo set was a note commemorating Sanjay, one of the founders of E3D, who tragically passed away at the end of 2021. Earlier that year, I made a video on what printers the community really wanted, based on the feedback of a thousand responses to a community post I put on YouTube. In those responses, Sanjay was active and talking about revolutionizing 3D printer hot ends with a focus on convenience and user experience so it's nice to see the Revo come to market and extend his legacy. That's my experiences and my evaluation, but this product is designed for the masses, so please head to the comments down below and let me know if E3D have hit the mark with this concept or if there's something that turns you off. 
Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.